I'm Dr. Vita Rattan, I'm a doctor, but I'm also a cosmetic formulator specifically for skin of color. So today's video is all about which acids are great for skin of color. With skin of color, our skin is different to Caucasian skin. We have larger melanocytes that are easier to trigger. As I always say, one scratch, one bite, or one burn, and we hyperpigment. We cannot afford to irritate our skin, and this doesn't happen to Caucasian skin. So this is why we do need to be a bit more careful, and we have to be far more educated with our own skincare. So today's video, I'm going to be discussing all the acids that come up a lot, and honestly, it can be very confusing. You know, they've all got different pHs, they've got different functions, they work together differently, um, and it's not always clear. So hopefully this video is going to make it very easy. I'm going to tell you exactly what they do, the best percentages, and then Dr. V approved products. As you know, none of my videos have ever been sponsored. They will never be sponsored. So anything I ever recommend to you on here or on Instagram or on TikTok um, are completely evidence-based. So if you want to follow me already on here, please do and hit the notification bell because I'm here for one hour at the launch of every single video. Plus follow me on Instagram. I've got two accounts, Skincare by Dr. V and Dr. Vanita Rattan. On TikTok, it's Dr. Vanita Rattan. And we have a private Facebook group, which is for our global skin of color family. Um, so please do join that too, because it's a safe space to talk about your skincare. Right, so today I'm excited about today's video. Um, I Hopefully it will um, dispel a lot of myths and, and will hopefully be good for your skin. If that sounds good to you, give me a thumbs up. Let's dive right in. Okay, so today we're talking about salicylic acid, glycolic acid, hyaluronic acid, lactic acid, ascorbic acid. Then we're going to be talking about mandelic acid, azelaic acid, kojic acid, and ferulic acid. So basically all the acids that you're likely uh, to find. And um, Okay, so let's start off with salicylic acid. Salicylic acid is probably one of the most common ones you're going to find. It is a fat-soluble acid, so it penetrates into the fatty pore and exfoliates the skin. It unclogs the pore um, and so it's important for if you have oily acne prone skin you're likely to be using salicylic acid. It's a BHA so it's not the, the most common acids you're going to find are AHAs, alpha hydroxy acid. This is a BHA, beta hydroxy acid. It's the most common, most popular form of BHA. Now when it comes to percentages, 2% is less is basically anti-inflammatory. And if you're looking at very high percentages, such as 24, 26%, then it's a keratolytic. And those that's the sort of percentages you use for a Veruca, for example. So I currently have three favorite salicylic acids. My favorite, so these are the ones. Number one is Paula's Choice 2% Leave-On Exfoliant. Number two is the Inculist Salicylic Acid Cleanser. And number three is Face Theory 2% Salicylic Acid. If you have oily acne prone skin, or it's the week before your period and you tend to break out, you need to have salicylic acid in your cabinet. If you have children who are about you know, 10, 11 years old and are starting to get oily acne prone skin and they have skin of color, it's important that they have a good skincare routine from this age because once they start getting acne, it leads to dark marks and that can take years to get rid of. So actually our children need to have a good skincare standard and a routine from a much younger age. I actually think our children should understand skin more than we did. I think that we weren't really wearing sunscreen growing up, to be honest. I think that we started wearing sunscreen maybe from 25 years old onwards or when you're just on holiday. Whereas I look at my children and they have a skincare routine. You know, they've been wearing moisturizer sunscreen since they were about a year old and they do it themselves and they understand how their skin works. So it's it's very empowering to children. It's one of the reasons I wrote uh, the book Skin Revolution with HarperCollins, which is available on Amazon, is so that they can actually read and understand, okay, if their skin is getting, getting oily and it's getting bumpy, what does that mean and what do they need to do about it? Okay, so moving on to the next acid, glycolic acid. Um, it's probably my least favorite AHA for skin of color. Um, it's an exfoliator. So the way it works is it dissolves the bonds between the skin cells. And so when you wash your skin, 
um, these dead cells come off. Exfoliation is very important and I do recommend exfoliating once a week chemically. But with glycolic acid, the reason I'm not a fan is because it's the smallest molecule of the entire AHA family. And so it tends to fly through the skin and can burn the skin. You get some, You can get something called hot spots where if you haven't neutralized the um, glycolic acid fast enough, then you can get hyperpigmentation in localized areas. And that's the reason I'm a little bit more nervous about glycolic acid. Um, but there are lots of benefits with it. It does brighten the skin. It can stimulate collagen. Um, over the counter, you can purchase it up to 10%. Um, in a beauty clinic, you can purchase use it up to 30% and a dermatologist can use up to 70%. Um, However, I would say if you really want to use glycolic acid, I would stick with the 5% or less. I would do a patch test first and I would just really pay attention to the skin. Once your skin feels like it's tingling or it's burning, please stop, wash it off and I would just wouldn't use it again. Um, so, you know, I know it's one of the most popular acids out there, but it's my least favorite for skin of color. And you know, there are certain times where I would formulate with it if I'm trying to use it as a surgical knife, for example, in a clinical setting in order to get actives deeper into the skin. But for home use, it's not something I'd recommend to my family. And you guys are my skin of color family. And so I would say, you know, minimize or don't use glycolic. Moving on to the next one, which is hyaluronic acid. Now, hyaluronic acid is a confusing one because it sounds like an ex it's an exfoliator, but it's not. It's a humectant. A humectant is a water magnet. It holds water in the top layer of skin. Now, hyaluronic acid, you can put onto the skin or you can consume. So, for example, I make my own marine collagen for anti-aging every um, I drink it every day. And I put in hyaluronic acid into my drink Um just because you're improving the ability of your skin to hold water in the dermis. And when you topically apply hyaluronic acid in a cream or a serum, you're improving your ability for your skin to hold water in the epidermis, so the outside. So actually hyaluronic acid, I recommend we use on the skin and also orally. So the hyaluronic acids that I like are Vichy Mineral 89, I like the Inky Less and also The Ordinary does a very good hyaluronic acid. The thing I would say is it's important to apply a fatty moisturizer on top because water has to be attracted to the hyaluronic acid. If you have not got a fatty moisturizer on top where water can be attracted, then what will happen is water from deeper in the skin layers will be attracted to the hyaluronic acid and can actually make the skin feel tight and dry. So moisturizers I love would be Cetraben or CeraVe, or of course our CeraPep for skin of color. This has got licorice root extract in it and niacinamide for skin brightening as well. So whichever fatty moisturizer, nave safe moisturizer you go for is fine, but you should use it on top of your hyaluronic acid, otherwise your skin is actually going to feel tighter. In in addition, you can use a humidifier, so water is being pulled in from the environment onto your skin, especially if you live in an area which is quite dry. Moving on to lactic acid. So lactic acid is another AHA, alpha hydroxy acid, but it's a more gentle form. It's more gentle than, for example, uh, glycolic acid. And it's also more hydrating. It's derived from milk. So it's a chemical exfoliator. It dissolves the bonds between the skin cells and then you, then you rinse your skin and dead skin cells um, are washed off. Your skin will immediately look brighter. It does also improve wrinkles and hyperpigmentation. So any dead, dull skin will be lifted. In addition, the reason I love it is because it improves penetration of actives because when you've removed that layer, that barrier of dead skin, you have much higher uh, concentration of actives from your serums and your creams penetrating the skin. So it's something that I do once a week. Um, this is exfoliate to glow. So this is 5% uh, lactic acid plus 5% mandelic acid um, plus glycerin. So glycerin is important because it hydrates the skin while you're taking the top layer of skin off. Plus it's got anti-inflammatories in it because whenever you are dissolving bonds, it leads to inflammation and inflammation can irritate the skin. So really any form of exfoliator you purchase, make sure you've got anti-inflammatories and humectants in it too. With lactic acid, the maximum percentage I recommend is 7%. Um, so just bear that in mind when you're looking at ingredients. Moving on to ascorbic acid. So ascorbic acid, basically vitamin C, um, but it is also an exfoliator. So it does have multiple benefits. It can, however, irritate the skin if used at high concentrations and if used often. 
So I'm not a huge fan of ascorbic acid, especially in the morning. I would say if you want to use it, use it at nighttime, followed by your fatty moisturizer. But actually, I prefer tetrahexyldecol ascorbate, which is a fat soluble vitamin C, which goes into the dermis to stimulate collagen. And I love sodium ascorbyl phosphate. It's water soluble and basically works on the epidermis. Those two together are an amazing combination because then you're covering the top and the bottom. So for my own skin, I wanted, when I formulated our antioxidant power serum for my own face, um, I wanted to use anti-aging ingredients. So I use tetrahexyl decal ascorbate. I use your retinal palmitate, vitamin E and coenzyme Q10 because tetrahexyl decal ascorbate is a very difficult ingredient to get hold of. It's an expensive ingredient, which is why you don't find it in many products. Moving on to mandelic acid, which is also one of my favorite AHAs. I love it for skin of color. Um, in recent years, we've seen the rise of mandelic acid. Um, it's the largest AHA molecule. It's also a chemical exfoliator for the skin, but it doesn't burn the skin. It's great for skin of color because it's such a giant molecule. So in my clinic, uh, which we, we, we had last year, we basically um, used mandelic acid up to 20%. And um, you could leave it on for hours and it just won't burn the skin, which is perfect for skin of color. For me, my aim is to look at 0% irritation. Um, and so mandelic acid does this. If you're not using it already, I highly recommend it. Um, you can purchase it on its own or you can purchase it in combination with lactic acid, which we put into our exfoliate to glow. So you can buy 10% mandelic acid from The Ordinary. You can purchase, uh, Wish Trend has got a product called Mandeli Bright, I believe, um, which I like too. Wish Trend has got a mandelic acid product, which is 5%. And also Face Series has got a very good product called Mendeli Bright. Um, so any of these I love. Moving on to azelaic acid. Now, azelaic acid is starting to uh, make its way actually onto the global stage. It's a, it's a great acid. Um, it's also, uh, it's great for acne and rosacea because it's antibacterial and anti-inflammatory. However, I would say make sure you're not using it with any other acids and you're not over cleansing before you use um, azelaic acid. You don't want to strip the skin of too many lipids before you apply it, especially if you have rosacea. In my lab, I tend to actually um, work with azelaic acid plus glycine in combination. Um, this is because it's a lot less irritating, but you get similar efficacy. And that's always the fine line when it comes to skin of colors. How do we get maximum benefit without irritating the skin? Next is kojic acid. Kojic acid is actually great for hyperpigmentation, which is one of our main skin issues. The problem is it can be irritating and I would only rec recommend maximum 1%. I tend to uh, formulate with kojic dipalmitate, which is an ester of kojic acid. So it's a lot less irritating. Um, but very effective. And I use that actually in all our hyperpigmentation kits. So you'll find it, for example, in our dark circles kit, in our facial hyperpigmentation kit, in our body hyperpigmentation kit, in our bikini pigmentation kit. So I created a whole series of pigmentation kits specifically for skin of color. And I made sure all the acids that we use and tyrosinase inhibitors that we use have been formulated for us. Moving on to ferulic acid. Now, ferulic acid is an unstable antioxidant. This means that you must use it in combination with other antioxidants and you want it in an airless pump. There's no point putting ferulic acid even with other antioxidants in a pipette which is what you know is very common um, because oxygen is just going to oxidize the antioxidant. It's unstable and so always 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 when it comes to an antioxidant look for it in an airless pump. So for example the antioxidant power serum airless pump is key. Don't forget to download your free guide for skin of color. I've made a new version for you for 2022. The link is down below. Please do follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, um, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for here and let me know which other videos you want me to make for you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.